All right, Zach, I'm gonna take the headphones off you. I've already taken the gun, you take the headset off and hand it to me. All right. So what'd you think? That was, uh, that was very realistic. This is an interactive video. You affect the outcome of this video. So what you do causes different things to happen. For the purpose of this scenario, you're a concealed carry permit holder. When you took the shot, what was, what would, what was in front of you? A flash, and then the guy fell down. And, Who uh, else was standing there besides the guy? The clerk. Yeah, Who, the clerk. Was there anybody else? There was somebody with a cell phone on the other side of the glass. Where were they at when you shot? They were probably pretty close to right behind him, weren't they? They were directly behind him. Basically, if you miss, or even maybe if you hit the guy that you want to hit, the guy behind him could have taken Entirely a possible. Hit as well. Entirely possible. That's supposed to simulate what is a real concern out there when it comes to concealed carry, mm -hmm. that somebody trying to be the good guy with the gun mm -hmm. is going to end up hitting a, a bystander, basically. That's right, you, because you're responsible for every bullet that leaves your gun, no matter where it goes. Every day, you're standing in line in a store waiting for to get in line, and someone that could happen. This is what the gun industry is preparing its customers for. A whole new generation of gun owners are taking up arms to become the good guy with the gun. This has become a constant in American life. During this live stream of the game, shots are clearly heard, and then shouts and screams as people scramble to safety. And there's a narrative out there about how young Americans are responding. The bottom line is these young people holding all of their signs, they want stricter gun laws. But that's only part of the story about young Americans and guns. New data collected for this report by a Newsy Ipsos survey shows millennials and Generation Z are buying just as many guns as older Americans. And they're actually much more likely to carry those guns on them at least once per month. According to our survey, that's especially true for young white men who make up the vast majority of young gun owners who carry. All this comes after a decade of huge growth in the number of permits allowing people to carry concealed guns into public spaces, now four times higher than it was in 2007. That's the reality for a younger generation of gun owners, millennials. It's a broad label, one that applies to basically all young adults up to their mid-30s. But across the gun industry, manufacturers have found a winning strategy for this new generation of consumers selling guns as part of a culture of self-defense. Fear. Before you face it, you have to crave it. So when it knocks on your door, you knock right back. How has Smith & Wesson seen the millennial market change in terms of their interest in products like this? Oh, I know, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of interest in concealed carry right now. The newest trend for most new gun owners is going to be concealed carry, personal protection. They want it lightweight um, to be able to, to carry it and they, to be able to shoot it effectively. And a lot of people want to carry 40 round magazine or whatever. Well, that's fine, do whatever you want, but uh, there's a lot of people that just can't do that or won't do that. And this is something that we built to cater to that market. It's small enough to conceal and it's large enough so that shooting in extended training sessions doesn't hurt your hand too much and it triggers pretty light weights. You know, that's why we named the gun the EZ because this gun's easy, easy to load the magazine, it's easy to rack the slide, um, and it's easy to shoot. When it's all closed up, just pull this down and it's ready to go. Double barrel Derringer, over under. I'll fold it up, it's about the same size as a Galaxy S7. We've got a thousand pre-orders, we've got 450 dealers already and we haven't even really shipped anything yet. The bottom line is there's just a lot of people that want to carry that don't. And so that's who our that's who our market is. The National Rifle Association's annual meeting is the biggest yearly gathering for the world's biggest gun lobby, drawing 800 exhibitors and more than 80,000 people, many of them carrying. So the reason I carry is just for self-defense. Um, I carry for self-protection. I carry because self-defense is a personal responsibility. I carry for my personal freedom, and I also carry for my safety. I carry to protect myself and my family because there's evil in the world, and if people has a gun, then I want to have a gun too. There's bad people out there, and I mean, I'm not the biggest guy in the world. You never know when something might happen, and I don't want to be in a, a situation that I can't control. I think it's extremely important that everyone who can who can own a firearm 
know how to do it so that they can protect themselves and their loved ones. I feel more comfortable being able to protect myself and my wife as well as uh, anybody that's around me. So self-defense. Self-defense. This is a Smith & Wesson compact 9mm, New York compliant unfortunately. I've carried now for going on two years. I carry a, a Glock 23. And I notice a sketchy character following me and so I just kind of adjusted my backside and it kind of shone a little bit and he backed off and left me alone. A lot of people say, oh, are you being paranoid? You wear a seatbelt not because you plan to crash, but in case you crash, right? So I carry a firearm for the same reason, you know, in case something happens, I don't want to think, you know, what could I have done or what should I have done? I want to at least have a chance to protect myself. The quickest way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. If one person in this room had been there with a gun, the terrorists would have fled or been shot. The voices of America's good guys with guns will be heard. The NRA and the American gun owner used to be all about hunting. It's a safe sport so long as we know what we're doing. But over the past few decades, that's changed. The only way we save our country and our freedom is to fight this violence of lies with the clenched fist of truth. As recently as 1999, hunting was by far the number one reason Americans owned guns. Today, two thirds of gun owners buy for self-defense. Over that same time, Americans' perception of the violent crime rate has stayed high, even as the actual violent crime rate has fallen, meaning Americans perceive more danger than actually exists. Researchers have studied these trends for several years, looking at the impact of more Americans owning and carrying guns for self-defense. One of the first studies came from John Lott, an economist and gun rights advocate who says more concealed carry means less violent crime. But Lott's work was debunked by the nonpartisan National Research Council, which in 2004 found no credible evidence right to carry laws had any impact on violent crime. And as more states allowed guns in public spaces, more data became available. In the past few years, researchers from Boston University to here at Stanford have found the opposite effect more guns resulting in more violent crime and posing a danger to gun owners themselves. Now in the 70s, uh, relatively few states permitted right to carry and over time more and more states have adopted these. So over this fairly long period of time, the states were uh, gradually adopting and, and that gives us a lot of ability to sort of tease out are things getting better or getting worse in terms of violent crime after you adopt the right to carry law. And what we found was that the adopting states tended to have about 13 to 15 percent higher rates of violent crime 10 years after adoption than the comparison states that did not adopt right to carry. Some people would say, well, this just create more good guys with guns. What's the response to that? Yeah. Well, I, I do think, uh, you know, most individuals are sort of good guys in a very small percentage. Uh, people can use them and have used them, but it, it is a very uh, small percentage of, of the time. The benefits of right to carry, while they do exist in, in a limited number of cases, the overall impact tends to show that the costs substantially outweigh the benefits. There are actually um, a number of different pathways that I think uh, right to carry laws do lead to problems when you think of all of the episodes that could generate anger, the increase in violent crime is what dominates. A shocking and tragic case of road rage, leaving a young family gunned down. A two-year-old boy got hold of a gun and shot his mother to death in a crowded store. A deputy does a black backflip and then take a look at that. His gun falls right out of his pants. When he grabs it, look at there, see the fire? Whoa. Yeah, he accidentally shot somebody in the leg. So you're always carrying something around that's a danger to yourself and others for that very small likelihood that you're going to need that gun. 
and the cost-benefit calculus just seems to be bad if your goal is to reduce the overall number of violent crimes. And there's no question the NRA really tries to encourage the idea that crime is, is out of control and growing. They do have a, a, a sort of financial interest in making it seem like the, uh, the, the, the problem of crime is, is a growing and dangerous one, so you better be armed. For more than a century, the NRA has been a champion for guns in American life. But even among gun owners, younger Americans are skeptical of the group. About half say the NRA is obstructing meaningful gun control. And increasingly, young gun owners have other pro-gun voices to turn to, especially on social media. Will you go to YouTube? Like, where do you go to, to learn more you, about this? YouTube's the spot right now. Military arms channel. You have to use one of these impressive weapons to fully appreciate their capabilities. James Yeager's YouTube channel. Iraq veteran 8888. Wolverines! Demolition Ranch. Oh! I watched my first uh, gun video. It was a nothing fancy video on a Ruger 1022 in when I was like 11. This is the tabletop of the 1022 by Nothing Fancy. There have been a lot of reviews on this gun. There's probably a lot out there. That's when I discovered guns on YouTube and I've been watching them ever since. Do you remember the specific channel that you, when you were 11 years old? Yep. It shaped how you view guns. Oh, for sure, for sure. There's people that I've been watching for years, and they completely shape the way I think about guns, gun safety, gun rights, things like that. One of the fastest growing channels in this gun-focused online community is the Warrior Poet Society. Where's my sights? Where's my sights? There they are! Clean them up! In just a couple years, it's amassed an online audience in the hundreds of thousands with ad revenue and merchandise, and with most viewers coming through YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook looking for lessons in self-defense. John had started with some videos in just the basement, and I was like, wait a second, you have 15,000 Instagram followers with no type of branding. Right away, we saw unprecedented growth. The industry is spiking right now, and we were able to trail that up. I had a message that I really wanted to communicate, and so that really just started me off on the journey of making videos. It turns out that there's a whole lot of folks that are just normal people like you and me that would like to be able to make some small steps to be able to defend theirs. And so that's what we tapped into. People really thirsted for reality television, but that became so fake that now all this social media stuff, it's the new reality TV. What do your viewers come to you looking for? The majority of them are looking more in that defensive vein. How do I shoot fast and accurate. There's also the folks that are asking philosophy stuff. These are the questions that you think are central for anybody who is carrying a concealed carry license, for example? Absolutely, or they don't know to ask themselves. Are you ready to die? What would you die for? What is worth dying for? Are you ready to kill someone? What is worth killing over? Certainly not property. You want my, here's my car. Here's my wallet. Not that stuff. But you have to have asked the harder philosophical and theological question. Is there an afterlife? And that may seem like, what's that have to do with guns and fi everything? Everything. How often are you carrying? Every moment I'm All outside of my house. Just about. There's my, here's my blaster. Surprise! <laughs> All right, so let's go through the training simulator. This one's called the smokeless range. And when do you draw a firearm? Is it appropriate to draw a firearm at all? Should it already be out? Should it be in the holster? So all those questions the simulator allows you to do. All right. And we'll run the scenario. Have a nice day, man. Thank you. Everybody get out of this robbery. Give me your money. It's real hard to just actually see and process and then make a quick decision. The idea isn't to shoot every bad guy. The idea is to, hey, real life, weird stuff happens and you gotta be able to think uh, quickly and see quickly and make life and death decisions in a moment that you gotta live with. So you wanna go through one of these? Hey guys, well, gun. Hey guys, put it out. It doesn't take a lot of looking at the news to realize that the world is becoming a more dangerous place. At least that's my opinion, and I think that echoes a lot of the public sentiment as well. People are arming up. 
The numbers show many of those Americans arming up are choosing to carry, and the millennials and Generation Z gun owners who've embraced concealed carry will shape the debate over guns in America for decades. So far, right to carry laws have opened up state by state, but that could change soon. Republicans in Congress are pushing a bill requiring all states to honor a concealed carry permit issued in any state. At the same time, the NRA's influence on the president's judicial appointments could set up the nation's highest court for a landmark ruling on guns. It's possible that uh, the Supreme Court may say everyone has a constitutional right to carry guns and you don't even need a right to carry permit. You can just do it uh, as a matter of constitutional right. Um, so we're, we're in a moment of, of profound potential change where almost every gun law in the country that is restrictive could be struck down uh, in a 5-4 decision of the United States Supreme Court.